Hi everybody, welcome back to class. It's Mark. Today is Monday, February the 1st. And I'll say this up front, we've got a very busy week ahead of us. I wish this weren't the case, but the next couple of weeks in English 112 are going to be pretty hectic. So I hope you'll take the chance to jump on things early. That's going to be the best way to stay current. So we're going to take a look at what we have to do for session four. And as I said, there's a lot in here. We're going to start our next writing project, which actually is not due this week, but I encourage you to start working on it as soon as you possibly can. And also, there's a lot of reading. I'm going to open session four folder. Here's the reading folder, a link to a video that you'll be watching for the next discussion board, and then the classical argument first assignment. And of these three things, I'm actually going to open this one first, and I encourage you to do things in this order. Go ahead and take a look at the classical argument PowerPoint, even before you start on the readings. I think this will help give you context as you begin to read the uh, the materials that are contained in the readings folder. And as always, once you open this up, go ahead and hit F5. This is not too long, it's fairly brief, but it gives, I think, a pretty good overview of what the purpose of a classical argument is, and that is an argument built on persuading someone to your point of view or drawing conclusions after you have considered both sides of an argument. An overview on what a classical argument is, previous slide, rhetoric and the audience, and then I think a pretty good e overview of the three argumentative styles, ethos, logos, and pathos. And we'll be taking a look at a pathos argument when we review the video for the discussion board. I'm not going to go through all of these slides, just wanted to show that to you. But definitely look through that first. I think it'll help. Let's go back to the class sessions and take a look at the readings. And there's a lot of them. And no, they're not short, sadly. You're used to this by now, writing comments and the writing center. We'll go ahead and open the first one, which is another overview of the classical argument. If you put the PowerPoint together with this reading, I think you'll get a very good understanding of what it is we're trying to accomplish. And several of these have videos included. Make sure you watch those. It's up to you whether you want to do all this in one sitting or if you want to break it up, but we'll, which, regardless of which approach you take, make sure you check out all the videos. And also notice, I believe this is one of them. I went through these over the weekend. Yes. There's also a next button. So when you get to the end of this page, you're not done. There's more content there. So we have one, two, three, four. seven articles to be read with details on ethos, pathos, and logos and each argumentative approach. And during the course of this class, maybe not immediately, we will be crafting an argument based on each of these argumentative styles. So it's good to get a pretty good understanding of how each of them works and how you will write an essay using each of these approaches. And this is a longer one as well. Again, the next button down there. It's up to you also if you want to print these off or simply just read them online. I would think it would be easier if you would print them. That way you can make notes in the margins, you can highlight things. But whatever approach works for you, that's good with me. I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm trying to keep these videos short. And speaking of what's going on in class right now, I have not read everyone's topic proposal. I have looked at several of them, but I haven't gone through them all. And as of now, I did not see any proposed topics that I would consider out of bounds or that need revision. That doesn't mean I won't come across one, but I haven't seen any so far. 
and I will be working to get those reviewed and back to you as quickly as possible in the next couple of days so that everyone knows if their topic has been approved. There's a lot of folks in this class and it takes me a long time to go through them, but I will work on this as quickly as I can. So let's get out of writing commons and the articles that we have to read and go back to the class session and take a look at the video. And I just finished watching this video myself just a short while ago. It's called The Matrix. Obviously, it's a parody of the movie The Matrix that was out several years ago, which honestly I did not see. But I must have done that incorrectly. Where did that go? Oh, here we are. Sorry. Here's the link to the movie. We're not watching a full movie. It's nothing like that. Once you see this page, um, you can watch the trailer, although that's probably unnecessary. The trailer's pretty brief. It's 30 seconds or so. Um, but you're going to want to watch The Matrix Relaunched, The Matrix, The Matrix 11 and a half, and then The Original. And each of these, I'll go ahead and open one of them. Not terribly long. This one's 3 minutes and 48 seconds. And as you'll see, the producers of this particular animated movie are uh, very much against factory farming. And they will argue that all of, nearly all of the meat that, and dairy and eggs that we consume is the result of factory farming. And they're pretty upset about it. It's a very emotional argument. But once you have watched all of those, then you're going to go into the discussion board. And notice that it asks you to think like a critical reader. Discuss a fallacy you found in the video, and there are several. It'll be interesting to see which fallacy folks in the class pick out. You're going to describe the fallacy and how this may affect how the audience responds to the video. Likely, many people will absolutely agree with this and think that the subject it is discussing is reprehensible. Others will be more critical of it and say that it is tainted or biased. So take your choice, or take your side, doesn't matter, but write in about 250 words your impression of the fallacies contained within it. And then you're also going to respond to two other students in about 200 words so 400 words total in your responses about what others have said they found as a fallacy within the video. So your original post of 250 words and then responses to two other students, 200 words each for a total of 450. Now I'm going to jump back into the classical argument draft assignment folder. Your draft is not due this week. It will be due in the weeks to come. But because this is a longer writing assignment, you're going to want to take a look at this pretty quickly. And there's two attachments here, the paper instructions and then peer review. And as I'll show you, you're going to attach the peer review to your first draft. And again, your first draft is not due this week. But because it's a longer assignment, as you'll see, Now's the time to start thinking about this. And the subject is going to be the one that you used as your topic proposal. Again, print this out, refer back to it. That's probably the best way to go. The purpose of this assignment is to persuade the audience will be me and everyone else in the class and everyone who may or may not be affected by this topic. Notice you have to use a minimum of five outside sources to support your argument. These can be things that you find using simply Google, although that's not complete. I encourage you to use the Ivy Tech online library and find scholarly or academic journals that address your issue. And this is important and sometimes this gets forgotten. Not only are you attempting to persuade your audience, 
you also want to refute people who do not agree with you. So just to speculate on a random topic, let's say I'm going to do a position that vaccinations are very important for children and that the link between vaccines and autism has been disproven. Not only am I going to argue that, if that is my topic, but I'm also going to include information by people who disagree with me and then I'm going to do my best within my paper to refute that, to shoot down their position. Here's an outline to address how your paper should be formatted. The introduction is very important. Give me an overview of the issue, explain the controversy, and detail what are the prominent positions. What are other people saying? What positions do they hold? I won't go through the rest of these. I do want to point out the length of this essay, 1,200 to 1,500 words. Using MLA format, we are not using APA in this class, only MLA. And everyone has been pretty good about sticking to that. Don't forget the minimum, minimum of five outside sources. The instructions here say do not begin using, do not begin your research using Google or Yahoo. Well, you're an adult, you can do what you'd like. Uh, when I was a student, which was not that long ago, that's how I usually began, just so I got a sense of what is out there. But of course, you're not going to want to just confine your outside sources to something that you find using these. But in my opinion, in my opinion only, it's a good way to get a feel for the resources that are out there. Most of the sources you are going to use are going to come directly from the library database. And again, due date, it's not due this week, but because it's a longer assignment, 1,200 to 1,500 words, start working on it now, or at least considering what it is you're going to say, and start looking for sources. When you write your draft, at the end of it, you're going to attach this. And you can simply cut and paste this into your Word document. And the purpose of this is that someone else in class will read what you have written and then critique it for you. Looking for things like evidence that should be included that was not. Consideration of the audience. If the argument is effective, do the paragraphs make sense and that they relate to the main idea or do they wander off course and so on and so on and so on and each person will have their draft reviewed by someone else in class so it's important that you cut and paste all of this and attach it to the end of your draft so someone can give you someone else in the class can give you good feedback on what you've turned in So for session four, a ton of reading. And also for session four, watching the short animated film, The Matrix. But most importantly, begin thinking about your next writing assignment. So here are the readings. Here's The Matrix. There's the link to watch it. When you're finished with watching it, Click on this link, that'll take you to the discussion board, and you can begin posting. And I encourage every, as many as possible to post early in the week. That way it leaves sufficient time for other folks to respond. And then the assignment and the peer editing sheet and the PowerPoint are all contained in the Classical Argument folder. And you're going to want to start thinking about this writing assignment sooner rather than later. Again, it's not due this week, but if you don't get started on it until next week, it's going to be very difficult to do a thorough and adequate job. As always, please reach out to me. 812-498-4200 is my text number. Save that in your phone. You can also email me at m-s-t-e-n-g-e-r and the number 1 at ivytech.edu. If you want to call me, it's 800-416-1747. I will be working this week reviewing your topic proposals and making a few comments on what you have submitted. I'll get those out, out to you as quickly as possible so you have sufficient time. Have a great week, everybody. I'll see you around.